Welcome back to another episode of Hands-On SAP Devs, where we've been looking at the recreation of the OpenSAP HANA 7 course on the latest version of SAP HANA Cloud and uh, redoing all the exercises using the latest capabilities of the Cloud Application Programming Model, as well as doing all of them in the SAP Business Application Studio. This is actually the final episode in the series, uh, episode number 15. Uh, it seems like just the other day I started this particular series, but it has been a relatively long journey as we've built the entire application from scratch and really looked in depth at all the layers uh, of the application from our data model, our service enablement, creating our own custom service handlers, uh, all the way up to the user interface layer. And that's where we want to wrap up today, really uh, sort of putting the icing on the cake, so to speak. We have done user interface components in the last two weeks. We had our WebSocket example that we built a SAP UI5 freestyle application on. And last week we started adding Fury um, UI annotations to our service layer. This week we want to look at two specific things. Uh, first of all, if you remember last week, we had the uh, product images, but the actual image files for those product images, we had not implemented any of the functionality for that. And I want to show you how to do that. And it's going to be a combination of both uh, UI aspects, but also uh, new functionality, the cloud application programming model to uh, act as a media handler. And then finally, I want to show you the uh, the Fury tools wizards that we have in both the Business Application Studio and Visual Studio Code, and how we can use those to generate complete Fury applications. Because up to this point, we've only been testing our Fury uh, annotations using the Cloud Application Programming Model Fury Preview Tool, but you'll see there's very little additional effort needed to generate a full Fury application. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, returning to our project, let's just go ahead and do a CVS run. Uh... Oh, and I was testing some stuff the other day and changed my default ENV JSON files. Well, that's what I get for not cleaning up after another test. So let me just rename that. Sorry about that. And now let's try this one more time. Let's do a CDS run. That looks much better. And I'm going to focus this first part on the product images. So if you remember, when we looked in our uh, Fury preview for the products, let's go ahead and bring that up. What we have here is for each of the products, we have a attribute or column here for product image, but it's not showing us anything, right? There's, there's no image being loaded. So let's go back in and let's see what this product image is and how we can implement a handler to uh, to store the images in the HANA database and serve them out via the OData service, uh, but, but let most of that functionality be handled by the cloud application programming model itself. So if we go back to our Fury annotations, let's work backwards from there. And we look at our master data Fury UI annotations, and we look at our products, then what we see here as part of our products entity, we have an image URL. And that's where we're gonna build up a URL where it can load that load that image. Um, pretty, pretty straightforward as far as uh, the UI annotations. We haven't really done much here to, to tell it what it what it is, but the magic, if you will, why it knows that that should be an image field 
Uh, and even though we're not supplying it, we don't have any images loaded yet, you notice the UI was already adapting and putting an image there. Well, it isn't here at the UI design level, uh, the UI annotation level, uh, that that's happening, because we said that's a data field. But if we go back to the data model itself, and let's go to the master data data model, and let's go down to products. Wait a second here to find it. There we are, products. We have an image URL, which is a string, but then look at the annotations that we've put on it. We've said UI, that it is an image URL. And that's the annotation that we put down at the data model level that's telling the Fiori UI to display this as an image. The result of this, it, it shouldn't just show the value, show the URL, but it's gonna use that as a source element in an image UI element. And it's just this one annotation that's, that's causing that. Now, we don't actually have any image URLs in the database, and we don't want to store the image URLs in the database either. What we want to do, well, in fact, let me let me show you that. Um, let's just look at our tables, and where's our product table? An SAP MD products. Let's go ahead and look at that. Uh, from, there we are. Uh, it's not a simple query. Very simple. There we are. And what we can see here, we got a lot of images, but uh, this image uh, image URL should be down here towards the end of the data, and we're actually not storing anything there if we look at it. Uh, what we want to do is we want to build that URL dynamically. So this is going to be almost like a virtual element. We're going to fill it using a cap handler. But what we want to do is we want to point it to another part of our service. So we actually have another entity here called product images. And it's where we're going to store the actual image data in a large binary file, uh, in a large binary column. And we're gonna have the ability to load these into the database and store them in these lobs, and we can stream the data out. We're not gonna to have to write any of the streaming logic to, to record the, the image file. We'll let CAP do that for us, nor will we have to write a, a streaming media handler because CAP will do that for us. Simply by telling it that it is a, a media, that it has a media type, an image type, and that's just where we're going to store like the file extension or or the MIME type uh, to tell it what type of, of media uh, to to send out. And it's a combination of these two annotations that's going to allow us to do a streaming media of the images. Now, what we want to do here to make this all work is, uh, first of all, I've just loaded... Let's come here to service, handlers, images. I've loaded image files into my project. Now this could be a one-time load that I could have loaded from the front end. I could have written a, a user interface to be able to upload or maintain images. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna create a one-time, uh, oh, we're gonna create a function here. And actually you'll see it, I think it's already in here. Yeah, we already have a function called load product images that's going to allow us to load all the images from our file system and load them into the database. So let's go ahead and add that to our uh, mdservice.js. That's our master data exit handler. And what we can do here is I'm going to add two event handlers. We'll see it here in a second.
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one to the products table so that after each record, anytime that we perform a, an operation on products, for each record, we're going to process this exit one row at a time. And what we're going to do is we're going to build that image URL dynamically. So I know the, the path to my OData service, and then I'm going to build using the product ID uh, slash image. And that's going to be where we can access the images uh, because that's going to use the streaming media handler that we defined in our annotation. Now, we need an implementation for this load product images function. And that's going to be right here. This is relatively straightforward. We're going to read all the files in the images folder. And then we're going to insert them into the product images uh, uh, table. And we're going to use the CDS, uh, CDL ex uh, abstracted syntax. That way we are not having to, um, to write the, the streaming insert. Uh, into that uh, lob column, uh, cloud application programming model is going to take care of that for us. So we just give it the product ID, the image type. Well, these are all image JPEG. I, I could have put some logic in here that would read the file extension and get real fancy, but I know I'm dealing with all JPEG, so I just went ahead and hard coded it. And this import data is actually the uh, uh, the byte stream that I'm reading from the file system. Uh, of my of my local file so we'll go ahead and save that and then i think i just want to put in a little test file here so we'll call this test image http and that's we'll use this in a minute to be able to test that we are getting our image back but first what we want to do is we want to go ahead and run our service again cds run oh uh products not defined where did i mess up oh i need Oop. i messed up just a little bit i did not import those entities at the beginning just a buyer. We're also going to do products, product images. There we are. That should fix that. Now let's go ahead and run. Yep, that fixed that problem. So there we are. We're running our service. And open it in another tab. And now we're able to run our function. So what we should see here, what was the what was the name of our function? Load product images. So I think if we went to the metadata and we did a find load product images, yes, it is a function import inside the, the metadata, but it doesn't show up here in the test page. So what I usually do is load one of the entities and then I'll come back here and I'll take the, uh, the entity name off. I'll replace that with the function name and then you just got to put the uh, opening and closing brackets on the end. And it ran that logic to, to load the project image, uh, product images. We got a return value of true. And now what we should be able to see, if I go back here and we look in our product images table, now it has loaded all that data into the database. Now it's not showing us when we look at product images, uh, if you just query the the entity directly, all you get is the uh, the the textual fields. We're not seeing the uh, uh, the image itself because that's going to be streaming media. We've got to call to call this a little differently. We got to call to products, and we'll go in through through products, and we'll say image, and that will load the the streaming media. That's the that's why I put this handler here so we can test it because we have to set a content type on the uh, uh, on the request. But let's go ahead and send that request. And what we got back is the 
content type of response is application JSON, while the response ba body is not a valid JSON string. Uh, so I think that's what we wanted to get back. Uh, not sure why it returned application JSON. Well, let's see here. Maybe I have made a mistake. Let me go check something and I'll be right back. Okay, apologize. I made a rather silly mistake when I cut and pasted that out of my original sample. I was using a slightly different URL. I didn't have the OData v4 for the separation of OData v4 and v2 that we added to this, uh, this particular project. So once I've adjusted the URL to put the full path in there, now you'll see when I send that request, now I'm getting an image back. So uh, I've tested that uh, my streaming media is working. I can get the image content back, but I didn't have to write any special logic or special handler to, to actually do that, that reading of the image. The only special handler that I added was to dynamically build the URL for the actual products table, which we haven't seen yet. And the other one is the one-time function uh, that I used to mass load the initial set of images. Otherwise, this is all standard streaming media functionality uh, provided by CAP. Whenever you're sitting on top of uh, large binary columns and you have the correct uh, annotations that, that we've added to this. Now we can come back here, if we would come back to our products and we look at this, we now see an image URL is being added. We didn't have that before, uh, but that's actually the exit handler that's building the image URL dynamically for us, uh, pointing back to our own OData service here. And at any point that would load a particular image. And now when we run the Fiori preview for products through the association between the two and the UI annotations that we've added, we are now, for many of the items, some of them I didn't have product images for, but anything that actually has a product image matching that ID in the database, it's now loading into our list. And if we go into one of these items, loads here in the header, uh, so looks pretty nice. We didn't have to build special logic into our UI. We didn't have to uh, really build any special logic into the service handler either. Uh, not, not to stream the image, uh, but we've got this great functionality with, with streaming media uh, images. And of course you could use this for other binary uh, file types uh, uh, as well. Uh, and, and it makes sense, particularly anything that you'd want to stream from the server without having to load uh, in mass. If I had a very large file, you know, a 20, uh, 30 megabyte image file or a 100 megabyte image file, it doesn't have to load the complete thing out of the database at once or pack it into a single response object. It will uh, stream it out of the database so that we don't overload the memory at the Node.js application server layer, and it will stream it to the client side as well. So it's not all in one huge um, uh, HTTP response coming back from the server. And the cloud application programming model takes care of all that for us. So now we wanna move on to our last step, which is to use the Fury Elements tools to, um, to generate a full Fury application using our UI annotations. So before we start the wizard, let's go over to our OData service. And actually we're gonna to go to the OData v2 version of the metadata and of our PO service. And I will go ahead and, um, and save this locally. So PO metadata.xml, there we are. And that's really done just so I can uh, upload that file into my project to get it here on uh, in the Business Application Studio environment because what I want it to do is there's my metadata. This is my EEMX document describing my service and all the annotations. That's what uh, the Fury tools are going to need to generate a UI. So let's come here now and 
run the Yeoman UI generators. And what you see here is there's a variety of generators. The one you want isn't installed. You can always come up here and you can do the explore and install generators. And you can search uh, for other generators. Like I might come here and search for Fury. Um, and you might see, well, you know, maybe I already have them, have them installed. Um, or maybe I would have to add them. But I have the Fury Elements uh, application. That's the one that I want to run. So this is still currently the Fury Elements OData V2, which is why I went and got that version of the metadata. Let's go ahead and choose that wizard. And it's going to ask me, which template do I want? Well, I want to do a list report object page for this particular scenario. And we'll do next. It's going to ask me for my data source. If I was already deployed to an SAP system, I could say connect SAP system. And then it would uh, read the list uh, from, Cloud, uh, from Cloud Foundry of uh, destinations uh, in my uh, space. Well, I, I don't have it deployed yet. I'm just running locally. I can say connect to an OData service, and then you'd enter the URL. But I don't think, I mean, we can try this, but I don't think when I've tried this before, this works. Ooh. Yeah, once authentication, uh, which uh, uh, would be a little complicated. I don't think I can, we can try it here. Uh, now, now I'm off in uncharted waters. Yeah, because uh, it wants the uh, the XSUA OAuth authentication, uh, but the wizard only supports basic. And without uh, changing the configuration here, this isn't going to work. But that's okay because we can just upload the metadata document that we pulled down uh, from from the previous step. That's going to give us. That's all we really need is to read the the metadata document anyway at this point in the wizard. Uh, so we come here to home user and then projects, and then here's our project we're working on. Here's our PO metadata. There we are. And then we go next. Now it's it knows about our service. So it wants to know what's our main entity. It's listing all the enemy en entities in our service. And actually it picked right. It started with the POs. Uh, that's the one we want. And then navigation, we want to go from POs to items. Makes a lot of sense. And then we'll go next. Uh, what is the name of your module? Let's just call this demo one. And purchase orders. We don't have to do a namespace if we don't want. Um, yeah, Fury application. And then what folder do we want to generate this in? Well, we want to put it in our project. We want to put it in our app folder. And then we want to put it inside of resources. We'll go right there. And yeah, let's see what kind of advanced options we have. Yeah, we'll go with the latest version of SAP UI 5. And we'll go with, uh, of course, Dark. Sure. But, uh, there. Yeah, just those three options. Um, sure, we'll send telemetry data to SAP. And we'll go ahead and say finish. Installing dependencies so they can run the Fury tools. We'll give this a minute to finish up. Project is generated. What do you want to do with it? No, I don't want to open it in a new workspace because it's already in my workspace. So if I come here to app resources alongside my freestyle application that I built previously, I've got demo one. Um, now, the only thing is, is it built this as a whole project structure here uh, with its own package JSON and everything. I don't actually want that. What I want is just the content of web app here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of everything here in the root. I don't need this for my particular scenario. Yes, we'll get rid of that. And then we'll come here to what's in web app. And let's take all this and put it up here in demo one. All right. 
it up there. And we don't need web app anymore. And I probably shouldn't have turned on the linting for, for this one, but that's uh, okay. Uh, what it is generated is a basic shell of an application. Most of the logic here is in the manifest JSON. You see this, here goes your service URL. This is where we need to replace this. So let me pause for just a minute. So of course, because we loaded from the metadata file, it doesn't know our actual service URL. So let's go ahead and fill that in. So that should be our OData v2 PO service. So we'll just put that in there. OData v2 PO service, OData. And we actually don't need the to load the annotations uh, from there, we can go ahead and, because we know they're gonna be in the actual OData service. So it's no longer gonna read that metadata XML that we loaded. Uh, yes, it, it put that in our project. We could create local annotations with that, but all our annotations are being served out of our CAP service. So we can remove the references uh, to that I don't even need uh, this annotation section here. And let's see, what other changes do I want to make? This is the configuration file where you're really controlling uh, the, the Fiori application. Um, it does generate some I18N files, which we could add descriptions to if we want to alter the descriptions. We'll pretty much keep everything just like the wizard generated. Preload true, two-way, inline, that's all good. Refresh after change, I'm gonna change this to true. Metadata URL parameters, SAP value list none, that's fine. No extensions, compact cozy. And then the layout here. POs, list report, POs, uh, object page. Let's just, uh, we'll just stick with the standard. We could also customize this if we wanted to add uh, more columns, uh, but we'll, we'll stick with the standard here as well. Yeah, that all looks good. So now the only thing we wanna do to be able to run this, notice there's no index HTML. Um, so what we want to do is we want to run this demo one. We want to run it from our shell. If you remember back a couple episodes ago, we actually have this index HTML, which is loading a shell for us. And, uh, what we're able to do here is I'll just come here, exercise chat and we call this, we just call this demo one, demo one, title, oh. Yo, demo, Yo, demo, and SAP component, what is, oh, sorry, yeah. uh, it's just demo one, isn't it? It's gonna be in folder demo one. That should do the trick. We'll save that and let's rerun our application. And then just like we did before, let's open another tab and run our app router. that in a new tab. Now we have this PO demo in our shell. When we run PO demo, I messed something up. Okay. That's easy enough to figure out here, hopefully. 
Okay, I apologize. It took me a couple of minutes to figure this out. And it turns out it was pretty weird. It was... It was the fact that when I put the key in here for the application, I had named this demo one as well. And then I was actually getting a, um, you know, we're gonna undo. Let's, uh, let's save this. When I ran that, and this is all the shell test script, um, doesn't like I, I think because it doesn't have a dash with something on the end of it so when I come here and I'll just show you the JavaScript when I click on PO demo on this could not open try again later it cannot be parsed demo one right it doesn't like that fact that there's not a dash and something else in there I think because I will quit that and let's just do demo one dash UI. We'll save that and rerun our app router. And now when we run this, now it takes a second, but it works perfectly fine. And now, instead of our Fury Elements preview, now we actually have a full Fury Elements application generated for our purchase order. You'll notice, other than some styling differences, you know, the dark theme and, and uh, things like that, it's not really all that much different than uh, what we had in the Fury preview. Although now we can configure groups and filters. Uh, there's a little bit more functionality here uh then uh maybe what we had before oh that's an invalid column name um because that isn't because that's uh, an association uh so great i, I picked um uh, i picked something that uh doesn't work there uh, uh so you see some differences here in in the ui take that grouping out oh no there we are we're back to our good data but otherwise, it's very much the same basic look and feel, the same basic functionality that we saw when we uh, used our Fury Preview, because most all of the functionality is being uh, generated off the UI annotations. So there's nothing all that different uh, about the way it functionally works now. See all the all the same capabilities here, the same sort of draft functionality as well. 41, saving the draft, draft saved, cancel, discard my changes. But now if I come back, I should still have my own draft. Oh, maybe because I canceled out. Uh, but you get the idea that, but now this is a full, like I said, a full Fury application. There's a little, little bit more functionality, uh, but, uh, uh, but having ran through the wizard now, now we have the full end to end capabilities here. And with that, that closes out today's session and this 15 week journey that we've been on recreating this entire deep end to end project. I hope that you've enjoyed coming along on this trip. Maybe you've just caught an episode here or there. Maybe you were with us live for every episode. Or maybe it's months from now or even years and, and you're dropping in and learning about a particular feature. That's what's great about doing these large series is they can be used for education in so many different ways. And I hope that people continue to enjoy this series. Now, I won't stop doing videos. Um, we'll continue on with other topics, probably shorter, you know, not not, not so many weeks uh, with such a large end to end application, but instead looking at uh, different small aspects from week to week. And actually, I'm probably going to take a couple weeks off from doing videos because one of the other things I want to do is start writing a series of blog posts uh, that go through the same application, but 
not everybody likes to to view them in videos. Some people prefer to to read about uh, the concepts that we discussed, and I'll embed the videos then inside those blog posts. It's just more ways for people to consume the the same kind of learning. Uh, so I'll take several weeks uh, uh, over over the coming uh, over the co next couple of months to to write up some of those blog posts. Of course, we have Tech Ed coming up. And if you're interested in the types of exercises that we've done through this series, uh, we also have some hands-on sessions at TechEd. I'll be doing one as well on uh, uh, HANA native application development in this very context. Um, so certainly not the end by any means. We'll be back with more HANA content, more cloud application programming model content, and I look forward to you joining us on uh, future episodes.